What's up guys, Will here with a brand new video on the 15 inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. I've had this thing for about three weeks now and I've been using it for everything besides gaming, which let's be real, I haven't had any time to do that. Now let me preface this video with saying that I'm primarily a Windows desktop user for work and play. I'm not really familiar with Mac OS X and a lot of my daily tasks require software that only runs on Windows. So I'll show you how to get around that as well as some other cool features that I found using this device. This model came with the i7-6820HQ CPU which is a 4 core 8 thread processor which has a 2.7 GHz base clock and can boost up to 3.6 GHz. So speed should definitely not be an issue for this. It also has 16 GB of RAM, a 512 GB SSD as well as the RX 460 in it. Uh, as a GPU, so I'm really interested in what that can do. But I mean, aesthetically, the MacBook Pro looks and feels really good in its build quality. It has an all aluminum chassis. The overall look is durable. This generation is only weighs four pounds. It's thinner and obviously lighter than the previous generations, which is nice. This means also that we lost some ports. Uh, with this model, has four Thunderbolt 3 ports, and while I believe this is the standard of the future, there was not really a reason to sacrifice it this early in the game, I feel. Granted, in my mind, how thin does a device really need to get before we obviously see some issues? Which brings me to dongles. Now, I'm coming from an Eraser Blade, which lacks an SD card and an Ethernet port, which is, to be honest, is something I use every day as I'm plugging in the switches and routers. So, I've had to purchase USB dongles for that, so I'm not new to the dongle life per se. But only given one type of I.O. being Thunderbolt or USB-C is a bad idea in my, in, that I feel. And Apple was trying to basically be a trendsetter here, which somewhat made me hesitant to purchase this device. My main concern with this device going in was the keyboard. I love my Razer Blades keyboard. It's a nice tactile feel and it's great to type on. Once I heard Apple was going with the butterfly switches again, similar to what was used on the MacBook, I was pretty sure I was not going to be making the purchase as I hated typing on that, or basically the typing experience on the MacBook, uh, which I tested you know, at best by going through their Apple store. The second generation, I have to say, is a huge upgrade. While the key travel is shallow, it does provide a good response on key presses, and I thoroughly enjoy, so far, the typing experience. As for the new touch bar, Apple had me pretty excited about it when they held the MacBook Pro announcement, but to be honest, I hardly use it. Yes, it's pretty cool to use to adjust brightness and sound, but after that, I haven't really found myself using it much at all, as you really do have to take your eyes off the display to utilize it. The trackpad, I have to say, is the best I've ever used. I was a little hesitant on how big it is due to the, for the palm rejection, as the sheer size of it is gigantic to any other trackpad on the market. Uh, if you, this is a concern for you, though, let me put it to rest, because it does a great job. To wear my razor blade, does a pretty horrible job. I have constant issues with that device. The haptic feedback and accuracy using the Force trackpad is great and I, I definitely think if laptop manufacturers were to copy something they would copy this from Apple. The retina display as you can see isn't anything really new but it's definitely a nice panel to look at. This generation boasts it being higher in brightness and basically the bezels are pretty much a lot smaller to compare to my razor blade. The webcam or FaceTime camera as Apple calls it is a 720p webcam and the built-in microphone is comparable to what other devices have on the market. So this is the webcam on the MacBook Pro along with the built-in microphone. The webcam you know like I said is about the same amount of quality as what's currently on the market. I will say though that the microphone does sound pretty good. The speakers on this thing are amazing. I thought the speakers on my Razer Blade were good, but the MacBook Pros are phenomenal. And lastly, rounding it out is the battery life. It's nothing phenomenal if I'm doing a heavy workload with an external 1080p monitor attached and running a Windows virtual machine in the parallels, I only get about 2.5 to 3 hours. If I'm only using the device itself with a VM running, I can stretch it out to about 5 hours. 
which is okay when I'm out in the field, but it's disappointing knowing that other devices such as the Dell XPS, I can get around seven hours easily and really stretch it to 10 if I try hard. Now let me first say I didn't buy this notebook for gaming, but it does have an RX 460 in it, so I wanted to see what it could do. So let's take a look at some benchmarks. So looking at Blackmagic Disk Benchmark of the Solid State Drive, you can see the write and read speeds are really good. I loaded, a, I loaded Windows 10 in Boot Camp in 1080p resolution and ran Fire Strike, which we see had pretty piss poor performance in FPS and score. I did a couple benchmark variations in Unigen Heaven and had to turn, it down, turn down the quality and anti-aliasing way down to get over 60 FPS, which is kind of a bummer. I was kind of expecting more. But moving away from the synthetic benchmarks, I tested a few games such as Witcher 3, which even at low preset and low post-processing, was able to only average 44 FPS, which I guess is playable for the most part. I then decided to load up Battlefield 1 and give it a run, and was able to get 60 FPS average on the low setting. Being a little bit discouraged of the power of the RX 460, I decided to load up Overwatch, a game I obviously in past videos say I play on the daily. It's a pretty lightweight game and was thankfully able to get over 60 FPS on a high setting with a 100% uh, render scale. So lightweight games like League of Legends and such should be able to provide a good experience on this device, but let me say again, I didn't get this device to game and thank God for that. So why did I pick up the device, say, over the Razer Blade or the Dell XPS 15 that I reviewed and loved a couple weeks ago? Well, frankly, I wanted to experience something new. I have a lot of friends who are developers of some sort and rave about how good Macs are. And while I won't jump on the bandwagon or choose a side of Mac versus Windows, I am always up for learning new things, which is really hard for me sometimes with my busy lifestyle or schedule, I should say, working in my normal job and with two kids who both play sports. So I try to fit things in where I can, trying to grow this YouTube channel is, is a challenge in itself with time management with my schedule. That being said, using this device somewhat allows me or forces me to use and learn it, which is awesome, and so far I have thoroughly enjoyed the experience thus far. Now, as mentioned, I have used this in day to day over the past three weeks, and coming from a Windows OS, and applications, some problems came up as using work applications, which only run Windows such as our dispatching software I use at work, having the caveat of only supporting 1080p as well, ran into an issue here because the MacBook Pro doesn't downscale to 1080p, as well as trying to run QuickBooks on a Mac, which isn't supported at all. So I use, I use those programs on a daily basis, and while being able to utilize Boot Camp, a utility that allows you to install Windows on it and boot to it, this isn't something I wanted to do. I wanted to experience Mac OS, so I found a program called Parallels, which is a hypervisor much like VirtualBox, except this application has some great features which really made me fall in love with this thing. So first off, it gives you a full screen experience of a virtual machine. It doesn't feel laggy at all, within a VM like other hypervisors, such as VirtualBox, and it's great. It supports a multitude of different supported operating systems and even walks you through how to install them, making the process very easily for anybody at your skill level. Now, the big thing for me was its coherence mode, which allows you to basically run a VM's applications while still using Mac OS, so I can pull any Windows application alongside a Mac application with no issues at all. If you haven't checked this app out, I would definitely do it because it probably could change your life. This program alone allows me to solely use this device for work and the price on it's not that bad considering what the software all does. So closing out this video, what are my thoughts on it? As mentioned before, I'm really enjoying the experience on it. I really like my experience with it so far. As mentioned, I love learning new things and the purchase has forced me to learn a new operating system. I also have to say I love Apple's ecosystem. With iMessage, FaceTime, from what I can tell, syncing, feature, syncing and other features you can do with other Apple devices, I think I might have to switch my work phone, which is a Note 5, to an iPhone pretty soon here to take advantage of everything. So I have to say everything is snappy for the most part. I've had a very few application hangs, uh, and that was mostly dealing with uh, 
running VMs and the software side by side, so I can't really attribute it to Mac OS. The only issues I can complain about is really the price of it. When you look at the hardware compared to, let's say, the XPS 15, which you can get fully decked out for a couple hundred bucks less than this device, which has 32 gigabytes of RAM, a terabyte SSD, and a 1050 Ti, not to mention a touchscreen and a fingerprint reader. Device-wise, I've only had a few issues with the Wi-Fi on it. For some reason, it decided it's that suddenly it does not want to connect to a network or once it's connected it just wants to stop communicating with it. This is usually fixed by turning off the Wi-Fi and turning it back on to solve the issue. But for a portable device and especially for this much money this is a pretty big issue by popping up and I'll have to continue to monitor it to make sure it doesn't become a, a big issue for the future. So far I've really enjoyed the MacBook Pro. And I am looking forward to look, keep learning the operating system as well as all the content creation applications available for it and using it as my daily driver at work. So with that being said, that's going to do it for me today, guys. Thank you for checking out the video. Please don't leave without hitting that like button. And if you're interested in upcoming content such as PC builds and such, definitely hit that subscribe button. I have a few things coming up that you won't want to miss. So as always, I will see you guys on the next one.